All right, so the, the, the question is, if we reject Barclay's conclusion, we could do that, that's fine, but what does that commit you to? All right, so uh, here we go. <laughs> So the premise, you know, premise A that we labeled here, if there's something supporting color figure and extension, then it is without color figure and extension, right? So atoms don't have blue. They cause blue, but they don't have blue. If we reject that, we say there is something supporting color figure and extension, and it has color figure and extension. Okay. Well, how would this play out, right? So we've got the substance of my shirt, and uh, you know, we say, well, it's it's causing blue, okay. But then, uh, uh, does the substance itself have a color? Okay. So, what if we look close enough at the material at, at the atoms, then we'll start to see blue on the atoms. All right. Uh, I, I I guess you could do that. But then the question is, what's causing that? Because remember, on Locke's theory. <clears throat> right there's ideas and there's qualities, and you know for what it's worth, it's what we currently think. Right, we have these qualities of this shirt, and they cause blue. They cause the sensations, and you know right now the qualities that are causing blue on my shirt are different than the qualities that are causing blue in you right now because you're looking at a computer screen, not my shirt. So there's these qualities there, and they cause these sensations, all right. But what happens if we say the qualities themselves have color, figure, and extension? Okay, well, if we say something like that, then the qualities themselves have some color, figure, and extension, but then that color, figure, and extension has to be supported by a material substance. And right? so it's what we're saying by this, you know, by this rejection of this uh, premise, that color, figure, and extension, uh, and that whatever uh, is supporting it also has color, figure, and extension. So then blue, the, the qualities of my shirt are causing blue, but then they also have a color. Well, if there's a color there, then there's something supporting it. So we've got the qualities of my shirt. I'm oh, sorry, we've got the, the uh, sensations from my shirt caused by these qualities. The qualities have, you know, these sensations. Well, then, then they're caused by some kind of qualities, which were caused, right, that, have a, that, that they themselves have color figures. So that's caused by a quality, right? So if we say that, you know, qualities cause these perceptions, or the material substance, causes these perceptions, causes these sensations, and they themselves have color, figure, and extension, then we're committed to like this infinite regress of color, figure, and extension all the way down and since in material substances. So it just woo, keeps going. Um, that would be bizarre, right? I don't know, maybe I want to say that the material substance causes the, the you know, color figure extension and it has those same ones. Like, okay, I, you know, maybe we could do that, but then we're, then we're kind of jumping down to D, right? So D, just to just show you, right? D is color figure and extension or my mind only. So if we deny that, then we say it's false a color figure and extension or my mind only. We're saying not only is it in my mind, it's in the thing. So my shirt here, right? My shirt here has, you know, causes color figure and extension and it has it. So my shirt causes blue and it has blue, right? There's blue in there. So if we were to look at my shirt, we'd find these fibers, right? And we go closer and closer and closer. We keep looking on down, then we find the atomic structure of the shirt, right? Is blue in there? If you think blue is also in the shirt, I'm going to ask for its chemical composition. All right, what is the chemical composition of blue? Because it's not in the period periodic table of elements. And again, for what it's worth, right? What you're looking at right now is not my shirt. You're looking at a computer screen or phone screen, right? You're looking at some kind of electronic screen. You're not looking at me. You're not looking at my shirt. Does that mean that your computer screen has the same blue chemical composition that's in my shirt? And it just happens to be both places, so your screen produces a bunch of different chemicals? No, right? According to our best physics, all of these things around us cause our sensations. 
but they are not identical to our sensations. If we say D is true, <laughs> we say that our sensation, I mean, it's almost weird, right? We have material substance as one view and the denial of, we have uh, uh, idealism as the other, metaphysical idealism as the other, right? Material substance says that um, this material substance causes these ideas and idealism says, no, the material substance doesn't exist. There's just the ideas. And that's what, that's what the guitar is. It's, it's all those ideas. If we say that color figure, and ex it's false, a color figure and extension of my mind only, it's like we're taking these two views and cramming them into one. Not only is there atoms, but the ideas uh, the caused by the atoms are also in there. Wow. <laughs> so my mind's infusing all of reality. Eh, no. <laughs> no, reality's causing the ideas in my mind, sure. But it's not that, that my ideas are also in the guitar. My, the guitar is causing the ideas, not, not the reverse. Yeah, not the reverse. So either A or D, rejecting either A, you know, if you reject A, you're committed to like this infinite regress of material substance all the way down. Or if you try to say, well, it also has the thing, but then you're doing D, and now my ideas are also infused in the guitar, infused, infused amongst the material substance. That's probably it. That's probably not good. <laughs> and C is kind of related to that too. If you look at C, uh, if it does not exist, if what has color figure and extension does not exist, so this embracing materialism, uh, then there is not something supporting color figure and extension. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm sorry, not embracing materialism, embracing idealism, say, em empiricism. If uh, um, color figure and extension right does not exist, then there is not something supporting color figure and extension. Well, then we look at what it means to deny that. We say what is without color figure and extension does not exist. So if it doesn't have these ideas, it doesn't exist. That's the essence of empiricism. And there is something supporting color figure and extension. That's, that's a little strange, right? Um, that pretty much seems like saying, uh, I can't see it, therefore it doesn't exist, but it is also something there supporting what I, I, I can see that, but I can't see it. <laughs> um, and you see, this is an out and out logical contradiction. We're saying, right, what doesn't have color figure and extension doesn't exist. And there's something supporting color figure and extension. So nothing is supporting color figure and extension. That's, that's, that, that's absurd. <laughs> it, it does exist, it does not exist, and it exists because of supporting this. No, no, it, it doesn't work that way. So rejecting C results in an outer, utter contradiction. Uh, not to, you know, Parmenides have a field day with this. He's saying, look, you're saying nothing is supporting color figure and extension. Thanks, that's helpful. Um, so then that leaves us with B. Uh, if there's something without color figure and extension, then it does not exist. This is embracing, right, embracing empiricism. So if we reject B, we're saying there is something without color figure and extension, and it exists. Okay, we don't have a logical contradiction in here. And we don't even have something absurd like with A or D, right? A is committed to this regress of material substance. D is saying my ideas are infusing the guitar, right? C results in a logical contradiction. Um, but what are we saying with B? We're saying there is something without color figure and extension. There's something that I can't see and it exists. That's rationalism. Okay. You can stick with this. You can say there's some, there's an atomic structure here, there's material substance here. I can't see it, but it's there. You're now a rationalist. Which is Barclay's point. Now, Barclay says, well, I reject material substance in favor of empiricism. And you can take his approach if you'd like. You can stick to empiricism. But then you're rejecting material substance. Or you can say, look, I, physics is amazing stuff. I'm really proud of our achievements in physics. It, it's, it's really, really awesome. Uh, they suppose that there are, that matter is composed of finite particles. Uh, I'm going to stick with physics. Okay, you could do that, but you've now rejected empiricism. You're saying there's material substance, it exists, but you can't see it. You could do that with you if you like. Um, but now you're, you're committed to rationalism. And, you know, here's an interesting question. Why stick with one rationalist approach over another? Right? 
You didn't keep Plato. Plato had some bizarre theories. We didn't keep Aristotle. He said that what is real is composed of what's not real. Uh, there's plenty of various rationalist views out there, and they are <laughs> some massive creativity happening with some of these folks. So why stick with one rationalist theory over another? Because it's yours? You can do that if you like.